Able to On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. Hello and welcome to this edition of Able Dead On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able in Vermont and beyond. I'm your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arm Seiler. And on, uh, before we get to our, to our guests, we are sponsored and we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and Champlain Community Services. We would like to um, um, invite you to um, go to www orcamedia.net and watch our program at another time. Uh, our guest today is a um, school teacher as well as the mayor of Montpelier, uh, Ann Watson, and Donna Bate, um, city councilwoman. Welcome to Able Than On Air. Thank you for having us. And yes. um, let's start with this. Um, off air, you gave me a long piece of paper to read and that was about the infrastructure of Montpelier and the goals of the city of Montpelier. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. So the city recently did a self-evaluation, um, had a consulting firm um, help us uh, sort of figure out what we needed to be doing as a city uh, to be uh, making sure that our uh, public facilities uh, and services were accessible to um, to people with a variety of uh, disabilities, and so the document that came back was a transition plan for us that was very detailed mm -hmm. and had a lot of very specific recommendations about how the city can be um, doing better, like what kind of uh, infrastructure we would be needing to. Uh, the to infrastructure be more fully accessible. Cracks in the sidewalk, uh, buildings being fixed. Uh. Yeah, it uh, included things like having van accessible parking spaces um, and having um, tactile exit signs and things like that. Um, well, as far as the infrastructure, example, what uh, there's something in buildings called the grandfather clause, which means if the building is old, it old, they don't necessarily need a ramp. Or need to be accessible. How does, how can the city infrastructure fix those things or work on fixing that? Well, I was going to say there's a difference between being required to and doing it. Okay. So go you ahead. can do it, but you may not be legally required if you're in a historical building. Yep. I think the city's intention is to make things accessible no matter how old they are. Mm -hmm. It may mean that not every building has a, a elevator. But there are services you can provide downstairs to make sure the public can at least be connected to any services upstairs they don't already have connection Ex to. Example? Well, I mean, let's say someone came in and they wanted to talk to someone about licensing, but that person was housed on the second floor. Then we would ask that department to provide someone going downstairs to work with that person who couldn't access the upstairs because the building was too old and too financially overwhelming to put an elevator in. Mm -hmm. So again, it's bringing the services to the person within the context of that working day where the person is in the building, just not on the first floor normally, but they can mm -hmm. go to the first floor. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah, I think, uh, I think as, as a city, we have an obligation to be able to provide yeah. um, services to everyone, um, regardless of ability. Yeah, mm -hmm. make it more accessible. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if you're not accessible in that area, you figure out how to become accessible. Yes, right. Okay. Um, transportation, important topic. Um, it, it, I, I also sit on the, um, yeah, my wife and I sit on the uh, Montpelier Regional Planning Council and we all, we've been discussing uh, um, paratransit and people with mm -hmm. special needs and there's supposed to be new <coughs> paratransit. Um, it, in terms of accessible transportation, um, what are some of the things that you guys are, are working on with the city council to deal with transportation and people with disabilities or problems in the past, how do you fix them, et cetera? 
Well, there are some separations here of Green Mountain Transit and Greyhound, who are the transportation direct provider, taxis, mm -hmm. and then there's the city who has certain routes or certain uh, influences mm -hmm. to those organizations. Mm. But I say on the regional transportation group as well as the local in Montpelier, the name is Montpelier Infrastructure, uh, Transportation Infrastructure Committee, the goal is to make more of those surfaces available. Now I can get in a debate with you about paratransit because <laughs> I feel like on one hand that's a wonderful way for people with clear disabilities but you do have to qualify. You, you do have to arrange but things ahead. There versus are those that are, have silent challenges. Yes. It's not every single... <laughs> that's hit, right. Here's the thing. <clears throat> to, to provide uh, um, you know, a clear understanding, a disability, I mean, it, if you can't do something and you have a challenge, you figure a way around it. But those that have silent challenges, yeah. like deafness, for example, um, and they need help, Well, or, or even more subtle cha uh, challenges. The one thing I'd like your audience to really call me about and to call anyone within the transportation community is that the difference between paratransit is more those obvious, more clear, definable disabilities. But just like myself, temporarily being in, in, in a knee brace, a foot brace, and now still I have a bad knee left from this auto accident, that there are plenty of times I can't get that big step in and out of the bus. But I'm not obviously disabled, but I need assistance. And so I still think the more we put into our general public routes that is accessible to everybody, it's better than having totally a separate paratransit yeah, yeah. service. Yeah. So that's my concern. So you, I mean, yeah, there are plenty of people who use transportation services because mm -hmm. of some physical limitation even though they might not qualify for paratransit. So that's my concern, mm -hmm. that I want more accessibility, right. not less. So they're building a new transit center, I see. Yes. They are, yeah. And that's hopefully not only Did to City Council pass any of the uh, budget for that to make it accessible? Or was that specifically, is that done on a federal level, not state? Or no, both? that's, that's a, a well, that's a local project done with state and federal dollars, and it's yeah. been a long time, many, yeah. many, many long years time coming. Needed. <laughs> but the idea there is not only accessibility, but that you connect all the routes, both regional and local, but you do it in a much more comfortable way. It's a, <laughs> no, but it's safety, also a safety. out of the weather. Yeah, yeah, it's also, yeah. a, it's yeah. also a safety situation, mm -hmm. because yep. we've had friends of ours that come to visit us There's and if a bus head. stops at three o'clock in the morning, yes. Yes. it's they not safe. Yeah. Yes. 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 I've done that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it's, me it's too. And a, you look around yeah, and just, single and woman and say, no, yeah. I'm here. It's no <laughs> yeah. no it's yeah. it's no Montpelier is extremely safe. However, there's also some you know, you got to sometimes because in the world we live in, it has to do with security. For sure. As well. And with our weather, you're not always safe from the elements. Yeah, so exactly. It, it, it's better to have this transit which, system will be wonderful. Which brings me, since you say elements, um, we're jumping around, but it's important stuff. <laughs> cool. Homelessness and people with special needs. What is your take on homeless services and that? So we were actually just last night at our mm -hmm. city council meeting talking about um, homelessness and the need for um, some... Uh, additional services um, potentially in the Montpelier area. So we know there is a group that's uh, that has been Good um, Samaritan. Uh, yeah, well, big. right. So the Good Samaritan, but there is also an organization. Um, uh, it's it's uh, like a collaborative group of service providers in the area, um, places that serve meals over the course of the week, and um, people who uh, uh, organizations like the Good Samaritan or, or another way. Um, uh, have, we're, we're all together um, trying to be involved in, in terms of figuring out how they can be working together uh, to meet uh, the needs of folks uh, uh, better than they are now. Um, th so there is a, a list of um, uh, service providers on the city website. And I just, uh, just yesterday, actually, I was <laughs> talking with uh, one of the fellows who's organizing that um, association of, of organizations. Um, uh, about uh, the possibility of the city being more involved and um, figuring out how we can 
uh, help in any way. Um, finding whatever gaps there are and, and then seeing what organization might be the best to help meet those gaps. Mm -hmm. Speaking about gaps, voting in people with disabilities. Um, there's been those new voting booths that they have on, on election day. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. that is accessible for people with special needs. But um, it, are there other ways that Montpelier is working to help people with special needs in the voting process? And then I'll bring up the census uh, at the same time. Is there any ways that you guys are working? Towards? So I am not aware of any um, other uh, ways that the city is, uh, is working on making voting more accessible. Um, so we, do, we did uh, just recently get those uh, machines, though I know um, I've also in the past actually been involved in uh, helping uh, read a ballot to uh, someone who needed help, um, like even just seeing the, the ballot and um, uh, you know, talking through what the, the options were. Uh, but besides that, I'm, I'm not aware of any other. Well, I, um, I think are, some yeah, of them are hidden is like, you know, Justice of the Peace, you can be organized to get a ballot taken to your home mm -hmm. and to Justice of the Peace come from both parties so that you can be assisted both to read it and mm -hmm. to make sure you get the vote and you carry it back. Mm -hmm. But also there's so much early voting to really make it more available to people outside of the regular work hours. I think our city clerk has mm -hmm. really worked mm -hmm. hard to allow people to vote, often early and immediately. You, you may not have registered yet, but you show up and you have your IDs with you and you'll become registered. By so in, way, in that way, I think we're really trying to extend ourselves. So at the end of the program, I'm, I'm gonna mention the census. It's extremely important for people with special needs to go out and vote. Uh, because if you don't, you're not counted. Now, obviously, if you don't understand the voting process, someone, I'm sure, can explain it to a person with a special need. Um, but um, in terms of education, all right, you're a teacher. You bet you have been for a long time. How long have you been a teacher? Uh, <laughs> gosh, I, this coming year will be the beginning of year 15. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's been a little what while. What is your take on people with special needs and higher education and um, special education, for example? Uh, is there anything that um, that you're doing as, as Montpelier's mayor to help with education and people with special needs? So it's probably uh, important to understand that the city of Montpelier is very... Um, uh, it's hierarchically separate from the school district. So sometimes people think <laughs> that as the mayor, I have some say over uh, how the school district is run, but, uh, and that is the case in some municipalities. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of any in Vermont that work that way, but, uh, but in other states, <coughs> that's sometimes the case. But in Montpelier, and in, I think generally in Vermont, um, the school district is, is very separate. It's so... It what do you mean by separate, exactly? So um, as, a, as a mayor and, and really as a council, we don't have any um, influence over what happens in the school district. Mm -hmm. So if we have an opinion, it's my personal <coughs> opinion. If I go to a school board meeting, I'm there sharing something from my personal opinion as a resident of Montpelier. But as a city council, there's a really definitive for responsibilities no, that okay. are separate. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I can speak to uh, you know my experience as a teacher in my own classroom, but that is uh, that's about as far as I can. Okay, comment. well, your opinion as a teacher, then? Sure. Um, um, you're a math teacher, correct? I teach uh, <laughs> physics and engineering and math. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But what is your take on special education and the importance of people with special needs and education? Oh, oh gosh. Um, it's okay to add your own opinion to Yeah, this. no, fair <laughs> enough. Um, well, so Montpelier High School, and I think uh, along with uh, the rest of education in the state, has really uh, strived to uh, mainstream students with disabilities as much as is possible and is, is reasonable. Uh, and so I actually um, have taught some math classes that had a high proportion of students with disabilities. and. I've, I've just, I actually really enjoy those classes. I think they're, um, they're really wonderful. The uh, students are uh, often uh, just like really, really re ready to uh, participate and, and uh, mm -hmm. eager to learn. So Do you think people with special education uh, or kids with disabilities don't get the fair shake of the, the um, how, can, how can I say this? 
they're not treated as good as they were. Well, they're treated better now than they were in the past, or your, your take um, Well, I think that's certainly true that um, they're treated better now than they were. But I think it's also um, I think it's also true that um, sometimes students get um, sort of put in a box in a certain sense, like oh well, if they can't do this, then maybe there are other things they can't do, and. Um, you know, it's, I think it's entirely too easy to make those kinds of assumptions. And so yeah. part of what it means to be a good teacher mm -hmm. is to continually uh, uh, examine those, those assumptions that we're making. And, um, and to be fair, I think um, even students, you know, with or without um, disabilities, right. um, you know, sometimes a student will struggle with a particular idea or topic, and then the next topic, uh, they, they seem to get it. Uh, you know, more easily, and they that, might need extra tutoring. But exactly, they, they and, get. and yeah, that's yeah. that's true for everyone, and um, and I think this the opposite assumption can also um, happen, right? Where if a student is successful in a particular area, you, it's easy to assume like, oh, well, they'll be successful in an, in another mm -hmm. area or in an, in another topic, and mm -hmm. and, and that's not always the case, and that's that's not fair to them, um, you know, to just uh, assume that oh, sure, they get it. Um, and it's, it's also not um, fair to assume that, you know, if someone struggles with one topic, they're going to struggle with um, any, any variety of other topics. Right. So. Employment. People with special needs. Is Montpelier, the city of Montpelier doing anything to help along that struggle or, or helping people with special needs get jobs? Well, so we did. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, no. Well, I'll, um, I would I would just say that uh, the Mont so Montpelier uh, sponsors a, a local development corporation, the Montpelier Development Corporation, uh, and they are tasked with uh, increasing the amount of uh, housing as well as uh, bringing in more jobs and. Because every state has a development corporation or, or something like that. Well, there are different uh, regional entities that are development corporations, but Montpelier has one just for the city of Montpelier. Uh, and so um, they're they're looking to bring in more jobs in general. Um, so that's not necessarily specific to you know finding more jobs uh, necessarily for people with disabilities. But one would hope that yeah. um, as we increase the the type and variety of jobs available, that um, that would also increase. Okay, how many people in Montpelier, according to the census, do you know the numbers of how many people in Montpelier as of now? Last I, I mean, I have a round number. Last I checked, it was about 7,800. 7,800. Wow. Is that about what yeah. you understand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, I asked, we asked this question of all, I guess, um, what are some of the misconceptions around people with special needs when people first meet them, you know, being scared or that type of thing? Oh, sure. I, I, um, only Especially people with mental challenges too, because if, if people with special needs are dual diagnosed. Yeah. Go ahead. No, uh, I I think uh, often uh, you know people with disabilities get unfairly uh, judged. You know, if someone's a little different, uh, you know, the, uh, when they meet people or people in the public may not know quite what to to make of a, a person or a situation. Uh, and I, it's uh, you know, it's unfortunate that someone might go straight to. Uh, you know, being afraid or, um, you know, shying away a little bit. Um, when really, uh, you know, I mean, all, as, based on my experience in schools, um, students with disabilities uh, are often just wonderful, lovely. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's good to get to know, like, okay, like this is what challenge this person yeah, is, yeah. is wrestling with. Um, and then, uh, you know, having some grace for them in that, in that area, and, and that's fine. Uh, your take on the same question? Well, I think for any time you meet a new person, biases are right there and you have to walk through them. And it's a two-way street, is saying hi and relating to that person and then re responding, having them respond to you. But I think being more aware of some of not only disabilities, and maybe you include mental health, is not to make assumptions. And that, you know, we Be assume, I mean... Because it's a horrible uh, acronym, well... Not yep. in my backyard. <laughs> yep. uh, um, yep. it, you know, community boards. I, I, when I was in New York, I sat on community boards, and they had to decide if a group home was going here or there. Mm. You know, that yep. type mm. of thing. So, bringing to yep. to the misconceptions, people with special needs deserve appropriate housing. They deserve to live in an area despite their challenges. 
Well, so, when I think back in the days in the early 1990s when we were really bringing group homes into Montpelier, there was resistance. But now the ones that I'm aware of have very much integrated or into those group neighborhoods. Homes or mm -hmm. shared living providers. Shared living providers, yeah. yeah. That, that they're included when there's potlucks. I mean, when one of the St. Paul is very active in its neighborhood. Uh, so I think it's respecting again that maybe my, like, I can be very outgoing. Now that might be offensive to somebody. So I have to sort of read those signals and say, okay, back off, talk a little softer, you know. And, yeah. and so I think those kinds of things are just being more aware that everyone's not like us. Yeah. yeah. That's right. um, yeah. And, and, he, and here's That's another true. thing. Um, brings me to this question. Brandon State School, right, institutions and people with special needs. We're, we're getting out of that. We're or we have gone out of that. We're not going backwards. But um, um, as far as like healthcare, for example, is Montpelier doing anything with um, the healthcare initiatives and help people with special needs with um, better healthcare, like with mental health, or or is that separate? Is that Washington County? That's yeah. That would be more in line with uh, the Washington County mental health. Uh, folks, uh, the city of Montpelier doesn't really does, um, doesn't really have a um, mechanism necessarily to. Um, uh, so you guys have nothing. Montpelier has nothing to do with the well, hospitals. The, the well, no, no the not state. not directly. I mean, yeah, th and that's directly. always the issue. Sometimes we want to take on global issues, yeah. and we're just a little community, but. I think it's very important, like elements of our police that have really recognized mm -hmm. the need for police officers to be trained in mental health and have this yeah. close relationship with <laughs> mental health agencies. So I think that's the way we as city council can support our staff to be more open, to be more trained, mm -hmm. and to be re relating to all the services. But we ourselves do not provide Because in the past, service. police officers, since you brought that up, police officers, and they're still being trained, they don't necessarily, you know, the, some police officers, if you give them a badge, they become power hungry. Uh, yeah, I think we have a great group. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Chief and Fake it, is really, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the role model it, there. It's, it's been better in, in the way, you know, the more training you have to work with people with special needs, the better off you are to understand what we go through. As a you know, and it's interesting to me how indirectly I feel people who are different, whether they're special needs, whether they're somebody who just quirky personality, whether it's mental health, but the crisis with opia, I think, made us shake up a lot of biases. The opiate crisis. Opiate crisis, yeah. yes. A lot of biases that we thought, oh, the drugs are only this group of people. Well, wow. And not only that, but it changed a lot of what policing does. The policing, yeah. instead of wanting to put that person in jail, they really want to work with them to connect them to mental health to help them get better. So I think Can not you only are a little bit more about yeah. the opiate crisis and how I, I'm no expert on that. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know how to handle that one other than to say that people across the board got into subscription drugs that then led them to dependency that left to really negative behavior. Mm. And instead of just saying you're a drug problem, go away more clearly, even though we were trying before, I think it became more clear that we really had to be community minded and reach that person where they were and connect them to services. Mm -hmm. So I think that helped everybody and it's cool mm -hmm. to continue to help everybody as we see any of us at any time can have the same problem. Mm -hmm. Any you want to ask yep. questions? Oh yes, Arlene, you're being very quiet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, ask some questions. Go um, ahead. Are they going to build a health center here? Like some kind of emergency. Um, I don't, sometimes I, when your doctor's sorry. not available. You know. Yeah, because it, you, have to, York, to have, yeah. like, you have to go to CVH, or you have to go to People's Wellness uh, Center, all the way over there. Like I know Montpelier has a health center. You know that's where our doctors are mm -hmm. across the street from where we are. But, but sometimes well, there is a, an hmm. urgent care um, on facility Mount uh, Road. on the very Montpelier Road, and, and I've there. used it once. It was really wonderful yeah, to so have it available. Um, so there is that. Yeah. Um, I would recommend them for sure. Um, obviously, for um, uh, uh, not uh, if appropriate, like if it's <laughs> if it's a you know a life threatening emergency, you definitely got to go to uh, the emergency room. But um, mm -hmm. but that also is a great facility. Um, and as far as I know, yeah. I don't think we have any further plans to build any um, other health centers. But as yeah. far as the, okay, 
besides the cracks and everything else that, or the construction, the new construction season that you got, that Montpelier is in, is there anything that we didn't touch with the infrastructure that needs to be? Oh, goodness. Well, we are, um, sort of as you mentioned, we uh, were redoing some of the sidewalks uh, in downtown Montpelier right now because they were uneven. Uh, and uh, needed needed some care, uh, so we're redoing some of those right now, which is uh, very exciting, I think. Uh, and then uh, the other thing to to look for is that um, in that document that I sent you, the the ADA mm -hmm. transition plan, mm -hmm. uh, that's available on the city website, uh, which is www. Uh, Montpelier vt. org. Okay. Uh, and then if you just search for ADA, um, and then I, I, th I, think, I think it's like the third or fourth um, uh, a link there is uh, the ADA transition plan. Mm -hmm. So that's really the thing to look for. But uh, uh, you know, we'll, we will be uh, looking to address some of the things specifically noted in that transition plan when we get to uh, the budget um, cycle, which is uh, really in, in November, but also our capital mm -hmm. improvement uh, committee will be uh, looking at some of those uh, allocations. Anything else you want to add? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's get to the census. <coughs> That's important. Yeah. Um, <coughs> explain why it's important for people with special needs to deal with the census when they come to your well, door. Well, the reason I brought it up to you earlier was it's in the news, and people may not realize mm -hmm. that their individual piece of filling that census out will help our community better qualify for grants in mm -hmm. federal dollars, as well as being better able to assess the needs of our community that aren't obvious to us. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage people to reach out and get the assistance they need to do the census, because it, hopefully it'll be in the mail soon. Yeah. <laughs> we're all and, hoping and, that it gets we, mailed and, soon. And, <laughs> we, and it's extremely important, um, since we're on the topic, it's important um, mm -hmm. for this November for everybody to come out and vote. Um, and. Uh, if you're if you're not counted, then you uh, then you can't you know if you don't vote you're not counted, um, especially for people with special needs. So uh, please go out and vote. Please um, sign the census if you need help. I'm sure someone uh, can help you when they come to your door. Um, you know, um, or I'm sure they, they can make it in large print if they have to make it in large oh, yes. print, mm -hmm. um, um, that type of thing. Um, and please, I know it's not town meeting day, but if you're in the city of Montpelier, uh, when you hear this message, uh, please go out in town meeting day and vote and make your voice count. Um, uh, anything else you guys want to add about what you're... Well, I was just thinking about November. I'm, um, hmm. I'm, I'm not sure that there is a vote this November. Um, there might be, but oh. definitely town town meeting day yeah, next March. March. Well, we're voting for president. This is this is a presidential. Well, so the primary will be in March, and then the following November um, will be uh, the presidential election. Oh, okay. So, um, so anyway. Yeah, it's, it, all, it's coming up. It's coming <laughs> up. Yeah, it's coming we got up. a good president. Yes. Yeah, and, and whatever town your people, or listeners are from, you know, really, I mean, call your select board, call your yes. city council, oh, yeah. and it, it doesn't mean we can go out immediately and fix that pothole or fix that sidewalk, but it'll get on our list mm -hmm. because it does take some comprehension of the whole infrastructure in order to change some of the things that are wrong what with it now. What do you mean now. by comprehension of the whole infrastructure? Well, you think that sidewalk is bad, so you think you can save it, but the fact of it is it's attached to a lot of other sidewalks that if you come in and do this, you make some of the rest of it. And then it moves once you have a different... And depending on the weather... Well, yes, and sidewalks move this is the way the pavement does. So when we make a slice change, believe it or not, that makes that section more vulnerable to get crooked with the others. So mm -hmm. usually you try to do a longer strip. So I mean, that's the kind of thing, if you call us, we can put you in touch with our public works and find out why we can't do this exactly the way we want to, but put it on our list. Because it's complicated. Mm. Speaking about complicated, and I, <laughs> I know that, that Montpelier in the past, or this past year, has had um, several, talking about public works, water main breaks, Oh yes, yeah. and yeah. issues oh, my and it's issues with that. To see that for all that water come For example, down. example, wow. we, when we used to live in Barrie, there was issues with the water and the turning brown and 
okay. other stuff and the, turning the water off. Yeah. yeah. And, and a couple of times we've had to turn the um, um, they've turned the water off in Montpelier and then they turn it back on because of the water main break. Um, does the water main breaks have to do with the cracks in the sidewalk at all or, or <laughs> in terms of the whole infrastructure, how is public works, uh, you know, good, clean drinking water a lot of people in certain countries don't mm -hmm. have, right? And they're working on fixing that problem. But what is one thing Montpelier is doing to um, fix, like, because uh, I know w weather has things to do with water main Huge. breaks, mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. Especially the cold weather. Cold, the, uh, cold the weather. When pipes cold, freeze. They freeze very yes. fast. Well, and par part of the difficulty with this winter wasn't just necessarily the freezing, but the ooh, um, the ooh. fluctuation <laughs> yeah. uh, back and forth between, like the freeze-thaw cycles, right? So What do you mean um, by that? Well, so uh, if the temperature is varying widely from you know freezing to somewhere you know in the 50s and and back down again um particularly in a short um, i remember the first time we moved to vermont it was 75 degrees one christmas yeah sure so it, yeah, yeah and fortunately we are having more of that unappropriate temperatures yeah but mm. the more, swings, swings yeah. really i mean it really destroys the roads but our our T pipes underneath the ground are really old, and we know that, and we have a capital plan of replacing them. But interesting enough, the ones that have broken most recently aren't the oldest. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that some of the newer material is not lasting as long as they were projected. Wow. So now we have a little bigger problem than we thought we had, but we're working on it. Last question. <laughs> ADA committee, because I know mm -hmm. that there's, I've, I've looked, um, you guys have an ADA committee. Yep. Mm -hmm. How does that committee work within the city of Montpelier? <coughs> so uh, I don't know how often they meet, but uh, we did just appoint someone actually to the committee. Yeah. Anyway, the meetings are open to the public, and they are involved basically with seeing how the city can uh, be increasingly uh, compliant with ADA standards. Uh, mm -hmm. So if if you or you know any of your viewers want to be involved, um, we would love yeah. to have them participate with that committee. And I just want to call out Tom MacArthur, <coughs> the head of Public Works, has been really committed to that committee, and he is retiring this summer. We're all going to miss him. Tom McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy. Yeah, M C A R A D L E. Yeah, it's a little different spelling. McCarthy. Yeah, and anyway, he's been just really. Amazingly open, focused, and been the one person that's been con constant through the, all the ADA development. So mm -hmm. I really just want to salute him and all mm -hmm. the private citizens who have volunteered. And, and thank you to the city of Montpelier for uh, coming today, and thank you, Mayor. And uh, um, we'd like to thank everybody for joining <laughs> us on this edition of Able That On Air. Uh, what's that website again? Uh, the city's website is www.montpelier-vt.org. Okay. Montpelier-vt.org. Um, also, um, deal with the census and, um, um, this year is it's vitally important. And if the city of Montpelier probably can help, um, please ask their help. Um, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and uh, Champlain Community Services. Again, this puts an end to this edition of Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arnie Seiler. See you next time. Ableton on Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disability to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.